Yo, you guys check out this plant. Look how cool the roots are. I think if you go back to one of my old videos, you'd see that it had short roots, but it's been growing. She's been growing. Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Emma. And in this video, I'd like to share with you my weekly language routine that I've been pretty consistent with over the last six months. The language I'm currently learning is Korean. I've actually been learning by myself on and off for about three and a half years now. And within that time span, I've probably spent a year and a half properly learning. And there have been a lot of breaks in between, either because my routine back then was too complicated and too hard for me to keep up with, or not fun enough for me to stay motivated. If you see me looking this way, that's because I have my script and my notes over here. Otherwise, I'll just be yapping. Anyways, my overall approach to language learning is that I usually use one piece of learning material in a couple of different ways so that I can get the benefits of repetition and so that I, the learner, stay entertained. And why must one stay entertained? Well, for me, the key to language learning is to somehow make it fun for you. And to me, fun means that I get to experience something through my target language that is meaningful to me and helps me grow as a person in the way that I would want to. And when it's fun and you see yourself grow, it's more easy to stay consistent you make more progress and you get motivated off of seeing yourself progress and this positive cycle continues. I will be breaking down my routine as well as evaluating how well those exercises target the input skills such as reading and listening, the output skills such as writing and speaking, as well as grammar, pronunciation and touch typing. If you guys are familiar with weightlifting, you would know that the core of every good weightlifting routine starts with some solid compound exercises, which basically targets a variety of different skills or muscle groups at the same time. And likewise, the core of my study routine also revolves around a lot of exercises that targets a lot of different skills all in one fell swoop. First up, I will be talking about my grammar course book and in specific how I choose it and how I use it, as well as how I use podcasts to target listening and pronunciation, as well as my reading exercises that I do and some accessory exercises, which adds to the experience and you can tailor it to your routine every single week so that it stays fun and you stay motivated. These sorts of grammar course books are usually designed and published by reputable universities in Korea for their language programs. And they're usually divided into six levels. I like following a course book just because it provides a little bit more structure to my routine. I can work through it systematically without having to plan way too much. There are a lot of universities that create course books like these. And although they probably do vary from university to university based on what skills that they target more, like some universities might target academic writing more, some might target conversational speaking more, but I guess if you're learning by yourself, you, the learner, are the common denominator, which means that it will rely more on you and less so on the course books. Instead of spending way too much time trying to figure out the best book out there on the market, I'd rather just choose one and spend that time studying instead. I am currently using the Seoul National University course book series, and they were recommended to me by some Korean teachers that I know, so I just stuck to it. So the way these chapters are structured, they usually start with grammar points, some sample dialogues, reading and writing exercises, and speaking exercises as well. And then it also comes with a corresponding workbook with activities that I also complete just to solidify the concepts I learn a little bit more. So my personal approach to learning grammar is to read a lot of sample sentences and try to build like a fundamental understanding of what that grammar point might mean. And then as I expose myself to more material, I will see those grammar points pop up again, and through that, I will build out my understanding of those particular grammar points. I also write down some of the book's sample sentences, and I try to come up with some of my own as well. 
Before, I always used to look up new words and look at their translation immediately. But the problem with that was that I kept on translating sentences from Korean into another language first to process them. So after I watched this interview, instead of looking at the translation right away, I will first look up images instead, also read sample sentences provided in the textbook, work through the workbook, and if I still don't understand what the word is by the end of all these exercises, I'll probably just let it go. And as for word that I can figure out through images and through context, I will jot them down and maybe doodle a little something just to give myself a visual cue whenever I look back in my notes. Because if you think about the way that babies acquire their mother tongue, they obviously don't have any other language that they can translate into, right? And they learn these words and concepts by asking their mom or their dad, who shows them through pictures, explanation, through memories, experiences, you name it. And so the child would build out their understanding of this concept through all these thoughts and feelings that they have. Whereas for me, when I'm translating, I'm basically associating my new Korean word with a word in another language, which is then associated with all the experiences, thoughts and feelings that you would have when you learn in your mother tongue. So I'm basically creating a pathway for myself in which whenever I see a new word, it triggers this whole entire chain. And I have to go through the translation before I get to the meaning of the word. So in order to bypass this middle section, I am trying to learn through images more, through context a little bit more, so that I can get straight from the new word to the meaning. And this doesn't mean that I cancel my dictionary altogether. I still use it, but after I have tried to build my own understanding a little bit. And my final activity for this section is to type up the new vocab and the new grammar points onto my laptop, just as an extra round of repetition and revision of the material while getting to train my touch typing skills. I have a very detailed video of how I use podcasts as part of my learning routine. So if you're interested, feel free to check it out right over here, but I will still be going through it briefly in this video. I use podcasts to practice my listening and shadow it to practice my pronunciation. The first step is to choose a podcaster whose speaking style you'd like to mimic. Probably someone who uses the vocab that you want to use or expresses themselves in the way that you relate with. Difficulty-wise, I try to find something that is challenging enough for me to make progress, but not so much that it becomes discouraging. You know what I mean? If possible, I try to pick a podcast that shares the same topic as the one in the course book, just so that you get an extra round of exposure to similar material. Step two, I just listen to the podcast once, just relax and try to understand what's going on, try to figure out some new words through context without stressing too much about things I don't know. And then I listen to the podcast again. This time round, I won't look up each and every single word like I used to. I will just pick out the words that I can figure out through context, as well as some useful expressions that I want to use later on. After that, I shadow the video to practice my pronunciation and intonation. So your pronunciation is basically the individual sounds of the words that come out of your mouth, but intonation is more so the flow of your speech, how you string your words together, how it goes up and down, how you take pauses, and things like that. 네. 네. 저는 우선은 연극이라는 장르에 대해서 얘기를 해 보도록 하겠습니다. 보통 한국에서 우리 연극 보러 가자라고 말할 때 연극은 소극장에서 하는 연극을 말해요. The more you do it, the more you'll find yourself picking up different words, expressions, sentence endings, whatever it may be to use in your own arsenal later on. Also, it feels really good. It feels really good to be able to produce sentences, albeit with a lot of support, but nevertheless, it's still very fun and motivating for me because I can feel fluent every once in a while. And the more you can feel fluent, the more you can get yourself into that headspace. 
the quicker you will actually reach fluency. The next step is I turn off the audio. I just let the subtitles run and I just read it aloud. 소극장은 공연을 볼수 있는 그 작은 극장이라는 뜻이에요. 보통 한 연극을 보는 사람들이 100명이 안 됩니다. At this point, I've already gone through the same podcast about three or four times. It's still surprising to me how many new things I can still catch on with each round of repetition, even though I'm still using the same material over and over again. Last but not least, I try to do a little bit of writing output, whether that be writing a summary of the podcast or my own little comment or comment on the video itself. And this is a great time for me to try to use all the new vocab and expressions that I have learned and picked up throughout this entire process. Right now, I am using graded readers just because I feel like they're a little bit more tailored to the language learner's learning process. And if you're interested in a more broken down version of this segment, I do have a detailed video of that right over here as well. So first of all, I try to read it aloud once or twice, you know, just to practice my pronunciation. 우리는 좋은 꿈을 꾸면 기분이 좋아지고 나쁜 꿈을 꾸면 나쁜 일이 생길까 봐 불안해한다. 꿈의 내용이 미래의 일과 관계가 있을 것이라고 생각하기 때문이다. Anyways, the second exercise that I do is to handwrite it all out. First and foremost, this allows me to practice my handwriting to make sure that it is legible. Second of all, I can also practice my spelling. You'd be surprised at how many words I can say, but not know how to spell. So there's one part in this reading that really gets me is Korean people believe that when you dream of a fire, like your house catching on fire or your company catching on fire, it is a good omen that good things are to come. And the bigger the fire, the better. It means that you're going to progress in your work or your wishes are going to come true. So I just thought that was super interesting. And thirdly, if not arguably the most important benefit of this exercise is that when I handwrite, I slow down a lot and it gives me time to ponder why an author chose to use this new word or expression or grammar point to express a certain nuance or level of respect. Last but not least, you guessed it, I will type it all out once again. This allows me to reinforce the concepts and the vocab and also to practice touch typing, which is a skill that I really want to have in the future if I plan on getting fluent in Korean and being able to type with it more than just for everyday texting. some notes for the next section. Okay, now to the accessory exercises. Um, you know, this is the part where you can spice things up and make it a little fun for you. For listening, I do listen or re-listen to one or two more podcasts that week. I just enjoy the act of listening. As for reading, I might read another passage in my graded reader but I won't write them out or type it up. Recently, I've started reading some novels and I basically just read it for fun. I don't stress over what I don't understand, which is about half the material, um, but that's fine. I can still gleam enough information to get a decent understanding of what's going on. And I'll take what I can get from context. So with media, I really enjoy watching interviews with celebrities because during interviews, you only have two or three people talking, which means that I can actually make out the distinct voices and understand what's going on. And the interview will probably go into enough depth into a topic for me to actually build a certain level of understanding surrounding it. But as for the show that I have learned 
surprisingly the most from is actually KBS's Return of Superman. And it is basically a reality show that documents dads raising their kids. I like to watch the episodes featuring Sam Hamilton, who is a Aussie comedian based in Korea, raising his two sons. Because the show revolves around the children, they talk really, really slowly and they use really simple, basic language that I could process and understand without having to like really stress out and catch up with the dialogues. The language is also used in specific everyday contact, so it's highly applicable for me in my life as well. Besides its language benefits, I also really enjoy the fact that I get to witness Sam's parenting style and how he's able to raise such bright boys whose speech has developed surprisingly early. I really enjoy understanding more about life in this sense through my target language. I do listen to K-pop, but I don't watch too many K-dramas or movies. Personally, when I watch K-dramas, I don't consider them study material because I end up reading the subs anyways. And that is because when I choose a K-drama, I try to go for one that is really, really good. And when it's really good, I get so invested in the plot that I can't risk not understanding what's going on due to my lack of language. And so I essentially watch one series every three to six months. I know. And same goes for variety shows. Usually in such shows, there are a lot of people speaking at any one time. There are a lot of scene cuts and jumps, which makes it harder for me to concentrate on what's going on. So with K-dramas and variety shows, I do watch them, but purely for entertainment purposes. And if I happen to learn any extra Korean out of that experience, that would just be a pleasant, unintentional added bonus. So in summary, my routine mainly revolves around my grammar course book, my podcast routine, and my reading routine, which I then type out afterwards as well. And my accessory exercises are more podcasts, uh, reading some novels, watching some interviews for fun as well. And I'm usually able to complete this on average uh, in five days, give or take. There has been a point in time where I tried to do these five day routines back to back to back for like a month straight, which meant that I had no like rest day in between and I burnt out pretty much after one month. This one week increment has worked quite well so far in providing me a structure that can help me keep me on track and see progress but also it's loose enough that I can shift things around when I have other things in my life going on. Uh, what else is there to say? I've said it before and I'll probably say it again, but I still believe that the key to progressing consistently in language learning is to find a routine that is challenging enough, but still fun for you. But the thing is, each of us will definitely grow as a person, and as we evolve, what we find as fun might also change as well. So when we do change as a person, it is also our job to be a little bit more adventurous, try new methods out, to find what is fun for us in that era of our life. Overall, I think that this routine does a really good job at introducing new grammar in a systematic way, as well as helping me practice my pronunciation, and my typing skills. It also tackles the input skills such as listening and reading pretty well, but I think I could still do something different to target my writing and speaking a little bit more. So if you guys have any tips to how I could improve that, I would really appreciate it if you can leave me some comments down below.
Other than that, I hope that you have been able to glean something useful from this video to maybe try out um, into your own language routine and see how it goes for you. To be honest, I have never been this consistent with learning a language by myself, and I will give credit where credit is due. The reason I started getting consistent was because I found a podcast channel that I really enjoyed listening to and that I really resonated with, and that is Didi's Korean Podcast. I mean, this isn't my first time using the grammar course books. This isn't my first time using the graded readers as well, but it is my first time working with podcasts. And that just made my experience that much more fun and rewarding. So Didi, if you're watching, thank you so much. You have given me a lot of motivation and courage to keep at this challenge and I know I'm not the only one to say that. Uh, it's been quite the video. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you being here all the way to the end. I hope you guys have a wonderful week and I'll see you very soon. Bye! Show off my hands. So cute.